Hey everybody and welcome back now for part six of this series entitled Design and Build a Chat Application with Socket.io. We are taking a little more time than I expected so we cut off the previous video working in our JavaScript and what we did was really work on the, the ability to dynamically generate the, the HTML that represents each of the messages that we have. So this was, this was some really cool stuff, some stuff that I'm actually really excited about that I enjoy and I hope you guys did too. And hopefully it showed you guys uh, some new stuff with uh, using map here and then uh, joining to basically convert the array of HTML strings into just a single HTML string. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. What we're going to do now, and actually before we move on, I want to come back to the dynamically gener generated HTML here. And I want you guys to um, at least at least kind of have in the back of your mind, even if you've never looked at React, even if you've never touched it, have no idea what it is, just know that there are, that something like React, uh, this is a lot of what you do for each one of your components, the pieces of your application. You'll actually define your, uh, your HTML in JavaScript. It'll be actually JSX, which is slightly different than what we're doing here. But the, the core concept is the same, right? You've got the ability to uh, to pass in variables, to do string interpolation, basically to put variables in. Uh, in React, you'll get into defining uh, your callback functions this way and all kinds of cool stuff. But just know, like, at its core, this is more or less what it does. So if you guys have a good concept of what's going on here, you'll be more prepared going forward if you decide to go into a, to a framework like React. So I just wanted to kind of make that um, make that statement so that you guys have it in the back of your mind as you go forward. So here's what we want to do. Right now we've got uh, we've got our application that's generating or it's displaying messages that we have hard coded up here at the top. So that's what we've got so far. Now we need to work on, let's start with our login functionality. And to do this, I'm going to come into, uh, let's say somewhere we're hiding. So we're going to not hide login. We're going to show that. And we're going to apply that class to our chat. Oh, I uh, say this correctly. Now we should see that uh, we're back kind of at our login window. And now we need to figure out a way, uh, once we log in, to navigate or pretend to navigate to the actual message part of the application. Um, and notice here that when I type in my name and press enter, uh, it reloads the page and then it passes in the, uh, the parameters of this form up here as key value pairs in the actual HTML or at the actual URL. So this is the default reaction when you submit a form. So we're going to take a look in a second of how to prevent that. And you're actually, it's a function called prevent default, hint, hint. Uh, but we're going to prevent that action. Then we're going to take that username. We're going to keep track of that username. We're going to uh, then push on a message, a login message, and then we're going to hide login and then show our chat window. So that's basically what we're going to do. And let me, maybe I'll, um, I'll stub this guy's out, this out for you guys. Uh, so let's first create the uh, callback function. So we want to grab our login button. I want to say add event listener. It's going to be a click event. And then here, uh, we're going to do another arrow function. So it's going to have a parameter of E um, that we'll get to use in a second. And then inside of here, we want to prevent default, default action of a form. We want to uh, set the username. Maybe I should do a comment here, set the username and create logged in message. We want to then display those messages. All right, and then we want to hide login and show uh, chat window. And it doesn't matter too much timing wise, but probably what we wanna do is, is show the chat window before we go ahead and display those messages. So this is what we're gonna do. Uh, so E is going to just be, uh, it's, a, it's an event, a mouse event here. It's going to be the arguments that are passed to this function. And to do a prevent default, what we're going to do is we're going to say E dot prevent default. Pretty straightforward. And this is going to prevent the browser from going ahead, going ahead and reloading the page and putting up the uh, query parameters up here. So let's, let's get rid of that. Let's refresh. We'll type in James. And if I click chat, I'm clicking it, but nothing's happening. And that's because we prevented the default and now we need to define what actually happens next. So we'll come back. Uh, we want to set the username. So we'll say our username variable and we defined it as a let and uh, I haven't really made this clear yet so far, but uh, let and cons are basically uh, ES6 variable declarations that are more or less going to replace var. 
Now, there, there might be a situation where VAR makes sense, but these are going to be kind of the future going forward. And in a lot of style guides, they, they recommend only using uh, let and cons. And basically what these are is let is going to define a variable that can be reassigned. Cons as a variable cannot be reassigned. However, even though it cannot be reassigned, you can do things like add, um, add properties to an object or uh, add elements to an array, such as messages here, but you cannot, cannot completely reassign messages to another array. You can edit what it's already pointing to, but you cannot point it to, to something else. So that's the big difference there. And this gives you, because you cannot do that, it gives it a little bit of performance boosts because it knows that it's not gonna be reassigned. So as much as you can, the recommendation is to use cons to declare variables and then when you need to use let. So that's why let is being used for username because we need to reassign it here and we want to assign it to the username input dot value. And just so you guys are clear, the username input is defined up here. And from the HTML, it's that one, uh, let's see, where's our login? Here we go. It's, uh, where's the ID? This one right here, username input. So this is in the login form, the input of type text where you type in the username, that's where we're getting access to and then the value property is what we want to assign to the string. So actually, let's just do a console log here so you guys can see of uh, username when we, press, uh, when we press enter to submit. So let's say James and press enter, and now we should see James pop over here. So we know we're getting that thing uh, correctly. Um, and one additional check we can do is if, if this is empty, uh, notice that it's printing out empty right here, empty string. We don't actually want them to uh, be able to do that. So what we can do is we can say, before we assign this, we can say if username input.value, and I'm using this, the bang character, the exclamation, and this is basically saying if username.value evaluates to false. So if it's an empty string, empty string will evaluate to false. So if it's an empty string, then I'm going to return and then just log, uh, let's see, must supply a username. Now we're not doing a lot of validation. A lot of what you would, you would typically do in a full featured application is you would check, you know, maybe the length of the username, maybe you have to have certain characters, maybe you can't have certain characters. We're not gonna do all of that stuff. We're just basically gonna check username input value if it doesn't exist or if it's an empty string, uh, just console log. And then because I call this return here, it's not gonna execute any of this other stuff. So I know that if I get down to this point, there's actually a username that's been typed. And to prove that, let's do, uh, let's do a refresh here. I'm gonna clear out these messages. So if I type, I get a message must apply username, or if I, sorry, if I press enter, and then if I press, uh, type in James and press enter, now I get that printed out. And if I go back, I get must apply username. So that's what we want. Uh, and you, you could do more things. You could pop up a, a prompt and tell the user, hey, this is not working. You could uh, flash a little message that says, hey, this doesn't meet the requirements of username, whatever you guys want to do. But here's the basics uh, just to get us started here. So we've got our username. Don't need to log that anymore. Now we want to go ahead and push on. So we'll, to our messages array, we want to push on the new object that represents uh, this login. So we're going to say the author is going to be uh, username. And then the type is message types dot login. Not login button, but login. There we go. So we're adding on to our messages array. We're pushing on this message. And it's one of those login messages that, again, doesn't need a date because we're not going to display it. And then doesn't need content because there's no actual content. All right. So last, well, one of the last things we can do is now just call display messages. And remember, display messages will iterate through this array that's now been updated. It'll iterate through it and go ahead and display uh, the messages. So now, if we, and we won't be able to see it yet. Oh, display message, and I think it's display messages. Yeah, let's refresh here. All right, uh, James, and log in says displaying messages. So this is a string, a, a log that I put inside of that display messages function, uh, at least for now, just to know that it's being called. So we can now take a look at um, hiding, and we've already called display messages. That's okay, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we can put it down here if we want. And now we can work on showing and hiding the, um, 
the login and chat window. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to, to the login window, we're going to add the class of hidden. To the chat window, we're going to remove the class of hidden. And this is a pretty standard, easy way to toggle different content to kind of simulate going between different pages when really you're just swapping out the content that's there. So I'm going to do my login window and class list. This is how you get access to the, the classes on that uh, DOM element. And then we'll do an add, and we're going to say we're going to add the class of hidden. And then for our chat window, just to, just so you guys are reminded, chat window already has, where's chat, already has the class of hidden. <clears throat> so we want to get access to class list. We want to remove the hidden class from it. So this should complete our login functionality for now. So let's type in James. And uh, we've got the stuff here that was uh, hard-coded. So these are hard-coded messages. And then now we've got our James has joined the chat. Uh, and just to make this look a little more real, let's go ahead and get rid of all of the dummy content in here. So we'll save that. We'll come back to our app. We'll log in. And the only thing we should see is that James has joined the chat. And just to show that this is uh, not being hard-coded, uh, I could do Jess. And now Jess has joined the chat as well. So the last thing that we're going to do in this video is create the callback function or the event handler for our send button. So when we click the send button for a chat, we want to actually uh, create the message. We want to uh, add it to the messages array, and then we want to go ahead and dis display uh, the messages again. So we'll grab our send button, and then the same thing, add event listener, a click event, and then our callback function will take E as the argument, and then inside of here, we'll do what we need to. And uh, the first couple of lines here is actually going to look more or less the exact same. So we want to still call prevent default because we don't want to reset or reload our page and pass in uh, values. And then instead of looking at uh, username input, we want to look at message input and say must apply a message. So this, again, is going to prevent people from submitting a message that doesn't actually have a value because that would kind of be a waste of time. All right, and then we will uh, we'll create the message to represent this message, the message ob object, and we'll say uh, username is gonna be the author, and this is the username that we that we assign down here, so after login, it's assigned, and now we just use it later on for any messages that we send. We'll say date is gonna be new date, and this is gonna be formatted pretty ugly, but we'll, um, we'll worry about that later. Content is gonna be message input dot value, and for me sending a message, I'm going to say that message types, or excuse me, type is going to be message types right. So uh, since since this is this send button, whoever is sending this message, it will obviously be themselves. So this is going to be a right message, meaning I sent it. When we get into Socket.io and receiving messages, the received messages are going to be left messages if they don't match the username that uh, is currently logged in in this application. So we'll see that in a minute. But uh, this is going to do it for the most part. So uh, a couple things here. We'll go ahead and, and uh, take messages and push on the value of the message that we just created. And then we will call display messages again. All right, so save this. Let's go back. Let's log in again. Oh, say add event listener. Cannot read property, add event listener of null. It happens and it's, I guess it's saying send button is null. So let's come up here and look at send button. All right, so maybe in our HTML, we don't have the ID for that button. Nope, we didn't change it to send button. Shouldn't be login button. That's what you get for copying and pasting stuff. So let's try this one more time. Let's log in as James. James is logged in. Hey there, nice tutorial. Well, thanks, James. All right, so we see this being displayed properly. This is a right-hand message. Uh, we got our join the chat message, our login message. We are displaying the name, which we actually need to fix. We'll, we'll take care of that in a second. And then uh, we've got a really ugly date that we'll fix later on as well. But functionality-wise, this is working, right? I could come in. Um, oh, and one thing that I do notice here is uh, we should probably clear this input after we send a message. So come into our JavaScript and where were we? Way down here. Sorry if I'm scrolling fast. I'm making you dizzy. Uh, so after we go ahead and display these messages, we can say message input.value equals empty string. 
let's save this and we'll switch back over again say James again say hey and then this empties and now we can type in again hey again with another message yeah all right so the few things we talked about we don't want to display uh, James if it's a right hand message so I thought we had done that correct before but maybe not so let's take a look at uh, the generated HTML so up here and for the author if the message author equals actually this should not be author this should be type so if I say this now we want to check to see if the type is right then display nothing or display the author so let's do a James again let's say hey you there and now it's not being displayed which is what we want all right so uh, and we'll get into we'll I think one of the last things we'll do is, is format this date to make it look a little bit prettier uh, and then we've got one more thing so let's see if I type in a message and I type in a bunch of messages Notice I start to scroll down a lot, but I'm I don't really see the form at the bottom. And what I want to do is I want to basically uh, scroll to the bottom of this scroll view anytime a, a new message comes in. So uh, the way we can do this is in our JavaScript in this event handler. The last thing we can do um, is we can grab the chat window and we can say the scroll top property is equal to the chat window dot scroll height and basically what this says is the scroll top is the the amount of space from let's see here let's come over here uh, the amount of space from the top of the element to where you're actually scrolled to so if you assign that value to be the actual bottom of the scrolled um, scrolled window the the scroll height the total scroll height you'll in fact uh, just basically scroll down to the bottom of the list so let's say this one more time switch over Log in again, type message, 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 message. And as we type these, notice that we're still scrolled down to the bottom. Now, one thing we probably want to do is on this form, so on this, can I get access to the form? All right, come on. I can select it over here. We probably want to add a margin bottom of 20 pixels to give us a little bit of space down there, maybe something like. 50 they're not quite doing there we go uh, yeah so we'll we'll leave it at 20 and just so it has a little bit of space at the bottom there to breathe and if you remember way back in part one we gave classes uh, one of our helper classes was a empty bottom M, or MTB actually let's double check or MB gosh sorry guys I'm confused myself MB dash two so M MB-2 and this should apply a margin or a, a bottom margin of 20 pixels let's try again and now you see we've got at least a little bit of space here and we're automatically scrolling down as the messages are coming in so this is really what we want this is the core functionality of what we're doing in the next two videos and the next one specifically we're going to set up our, our node server then we'll tie in a little bit of the socket IO and in the last video we'll wrap it all together with having the messages come in, the messages being sent out, messages received so we can get to this final application that allows you to talk to other people that are also uh, using the application. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, another one of these JavaScript videos. I think it's pretty cool. I think there's a lot of good stuff in here. Uh, a lot of good concepts for ES6 with arrow functions and uh, not necessarily ES6, but your callback functions, preventing the default action of a form, using um, the add and remove of classes. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. So I hope you enjoyed it. That's going to do it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.